Our love affair with the cinema stretches back almost 130 years. It has thrilled, chilled, entertained, informed and educated us. It has brought new words into the language, helped shape our dreams and turned actors into icons. The story of cinema in Leeds began in 1888. The brief footage shot by Louis Le Prince on Leeds Bridge is thought to be the world's first example of moving images being captured on camera. In less than a decade, cinema had evolved from a novelty to a new and popular mass entertainment. days cinemas were converted from other buildings, theatres, skating rinks, miners' institutes or Salvation Army barracks. Some cinema conversions, like the Colosseum Theatre, lived up to the name of Picture Palace. Others were cramped and insanitary flea pits, where disinfectant was sprayed between shows to control the bugs and mask the smell. The new cinemas could also be dangerous. The Alexandra Picture Palace on Albion Street was built of wood, potentially lethal when combined with highly inflammable nitrate film stock. In 1909, the Cinematograph Act required the provision of a fire-resistant projection booth and resulted in the construction of purpose-built cinemas. The first in Leeds was the Rialto in Brigat. The Rialto opened in April 1911 as the Picture House and could seat 650. The new cinemas were safer, cleaner, better appointed and popular. The Burley Picture House, the Abbey, the Western Cinema and others all opened their doors in the years preceding World War I. Films were silent with accompaniment being provided by a piano or, in the better class of cinema, an orchestra. The cheapest seats cost the equivalent of 50 pence in today's money though programmes lasted only an hour to 90 minutes and mainly consisted of short films, travelogues and news. Feature films came to Britain in 1914, as did war. But although hostilities slowed down the growth of cinema, it did not halt it. For a war-weary public wanted the mix of news, propaganda and entertainment that only cinema could provide. When peace came, the cinema industry was soon engaged in building a new generation of super cinemas. The Majestic, built in 1922, was the first of the new wave of Leeds cinemas and brought a touch of luxury into the lives of many who saw little of it in their day-to-day -day existence. The Majestic seated 600 patrons and had a domed ceiling bigger than that of St Paul's. The Paramount, the Scala and the Ritz offered similar levels of comfort and there seemed no limit to the public's appetite for film. The suburbs saw the building of new movie houses like the Glen Royal and the Electric Palace to join established suburban cinemas like the Hyde Park and the Lounge. In the years between the wars, 50% of the population went to the cinema at least once a week. And popular films were staggeringly popular. It's estimated that a third of the UK population saw Disney's Snow White. Cinema provided news as well as entertainment, 
and audiences in the 30s were all too aware of the growing threat of war. When hostilities broke out in 1939, all cinemas were closed, but rapidly reopened when it was realized that they were an irreplaceable provider of entertainment, news and light relief. By the war's end, the cinema seemed more popular than ever. 1946 saw the highest ever number of cinema attendances, but then came decline. A more affluent society offered a greater choice of leisure activities. Television made big inroads into cinema's audiences, and as lead slums were cleared, people moved into homes that were warmer and more comfortable, making staying in at night a more attractive option. Between 1956 and 1960, audiences halved and the decline became unstoppable. The Abbey, the Capitol, the Carlton, the Clifton, the Crescent, the Crown, the Dominion, the Gainsborough, all went dark for the last time. Some city centre cinemas like the Odeon fought back by dividing the old auditoriums into two or three screens, and determined lovers of cinema preserve such gems as the Hyde Park. The ABC, too, fought long and hard to survive in a changing world. Opening in 1934 as the Ritz, it became a twin cinema in 1970, and in 1974 became Leeds' first triple cinema. Fondly remembered for its Saturday kids' club and friendly atmosphere, it underwent two changes of name, finally reverting to the ABC. Sadly, it could not fight economics, and it closed its doors on more than 60 years of memories in February 2000. Cinema audiences hit their lowest ever figure in 1984, and there were confident predictions that the rise of video would finally kill off the cinema, but all was not lost. The advent of the multiplex helped audience figures recover, and the increasing technical sophistication of the effects brought people back to the sheer spectacle of the big screen. Today, Leeds has just six cinemas, although multiplexes can contain a dozen screens. Yet though they offer luxury and warmth, few would claim they offer as much in terms of atmosphere as the old picture palaces. Over the course of the last 120 years, the city has witnessed the rise, fall and survival of the cinema. We now watch films on our TVs, laptops, tablets, phones, even watches but there is still the belief that film is best experienced in a cinema. The old cinemas may be long gone, but they will also be long remembered, and the ghosts of many remain with us still, as reminders of a Leeds that once was.